the last common security principle we're going to cover is that of common network security zones. Take a look at this drawing. We have a private side of a network, a firewall, and a public side of a network, which we can assume is the part of the network that's facing the internet. And then in the middle of all that, we have a demilitarized zone or DMZ for short. Now, this type of diagram you are going to see quite a bit when we cover firewalls later on in the course. But before we do that, let's just make sure we're familiar with what each area of this network does. First, understand that for network security zones, these zones are tied together through a firewall. In this particular course, we're gonna be covering Cisco ASA firewalls later on, so we'll make that the focus then. First, we have the private zone, otherwise known as the inside zone. Now, this zone's gonna hold traffic that should not get to the outside network without authorization. In this, your devices are going to have private IP addresses. And remember, private IP addresses are non-routable IP addresses. In other words, a router cannot do anything with them. That's the private part of your network. Now, you might be thinking, well, wait a second. Don't I make internet requests from my private zone? And the answer is absolutely you do. But it's the public zone that handles them. The public zone, also known as the outside zone or the internet zone, is the zone the public sees. In between that, you have what's called a DMZ, a demilitarized zone. This is a zone which holds servers that need both public and private access. Now, as far as the way your data flows, we mentioned earlier that there's usually not a lot of restriction from data going from the private to the public zone, especially since we're mostly talking about requests here, like web requests. Now, from public to private, you might be thinking, well, if that data is usually restricted, then how do we get responses from websites that are in the public domain back to our private network? Well, there's a concept that we're going to cover very well when we cover firewalls called inspected traffic. Basically, it works this way. You send a web request out, the firewall knows it's you, and it knows what your request is. So that when the data comes back, it looks and goes, oh, yeah, I know. It's this data that so-and-so requested. Here you go. That's the data that will be allowed because it knows it's waiting for a response. Now, most other public traffic is not gonna be allowed on a private network. Same goes for the DMZ. Most traffic in a DMZ is not gonna be allowed on a private network directly. Now, can you make exceptions for this? Sure, and we'll see how to do that later on. Now, what kind of traffic do we usually allow into the DMZ? Well, first we have to understand what goes inside of a DMZ. DMZ is typically gonna have servers that need to face both the private and the public parts of your network. Things such as web servers, email servers, for example, those types of servers. Now, is this a physical definition for a DMZ? Probably not. This is a logical definition for sure. So where you have internal servers in your private network that do not need to face the public, again, your DMZ will have web servers, email servers, perhaps some application servers that people from the public side of the network need to see pretty easily here. Think of your DMZ as sort of the go-between private and public aspects of your network. And for that reason, we can set up and conditionally allow data from the DMZ to the public zone of our network. So again, three common network zones, private for your inside part of your network, the public for the outside part of your network, the internet zone, and the one in between, the DMZ. 